Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. (laughs) Mr. District Attorney is brought to you by two famous Bristol-Myers products, Vitalis and Sal Hepatica. Vitalis for hair that's well-groomed, Sal Hepatica for the smile of health. Vitalis... Sal Hepatica. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. The Case of the Deadly Train. Our story opens tonight in the station master's office of a Chicago railroad terminal, just off the main waiting room. I think you know the members of my party, Miss Billings. This is Miss Miller, my secretary. Mr. Billings? How do you do? And this is my chief special investigator, Mr. Harrington. How are you, Mr. Harrington? And this is Tom Niles. Uh, Mr. Billings is the conductor of the train we're taking back home, Niles. Go ahead, Niles. You can talk in here. Look, can't we get going? I mean, isn't the time to get on the train? He's handcuffed to you, Mr. Harrington? Yeah, that's right. Just a precaution, conductor. This is one trip we're going to be sure to make, huh, Chief? I've told Mr. Billings the importance we attach to getting Niles back home with us, Harrington. I might say again, while we're all here, however, that we'll stop at nothing to make sure of it. I read in the papers how important he is. Going to identify that killer for you in your trial, isn't that it? Yes, Niles has agreed to make the identification. Unfortunately, the newspapers have also printed the fact that he's the only witness I have against Johnny Galena. Mm. That sort of publicity isn't helpful at all. The journal gave it the front page this morning, Chief. Did you see it, Harrington? Yeah, I'll say I did. They hit it right on the nose, too. Said the district attorney considered Niles so important, he came out here personally to extradite him. Hey, look, can't we... Okay, okay, Niles, calm down. Calm down. There's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about? Are you crazy? Johnny Galena's got friends, ain't he... You think they're going to let me identify him if they can stop me? Oh, well, they'll do nothing, Niles. You're in my protection now, and I'll keep my promise to you. Is the train ready, Mr. Billings? I've got everything arranged. Sure, you keep your promise. They let me out of jail here to go back with you, sure, and all I get out of it is to be a target. Don't you uh, see, you Harry? better get going, Harry. Yeah, right, Chief. Come on, Niles, and remember, when we go out that door, don't look to the right or the left, see? Just follow the conductor here. I'll take them directly to drawing room B. Is that right? Fine. You have your ticket, Miss Miller? Right, Chief. Bedroom H. I'll get on last, the way you said. Call me, Mr. Harrington. Let's go, Niles. I'll check with you later, Harrington, as soon as I get to my own bedroom. Passengers holding tickets... Just remember, C.A., you're responsible for me. Niles, I assure you, you won't be out of my mind for a moment. Not until I've got you safely on the stand against Galena. All right, Harrington, go on. Right. Let's go. You wait a few minutes, Miss Miller, and then board with the crowd outside, all right? Yeah, I know what to do, Chief. Good. I'll find you when I need you. In the meantime, don't recognize me on the train. It's better if we're not seen together. Chief. Yes? You're worried about this trip, aren't you? Frankly, Miss Miller, I am. Niles is my only witness in a trial that means... Well, you know what it means. Sure, Chief. I've got to get that man there to testify. Yes, and in condition to testify, too. So Super let's hope for the best. Well? They're on the train, all right. The DA's assistant has Niles in drawing room B. Harrington? Is that the name on the orders? Yeah. There's pictures in the folder. Never mind, Elsie. It's him, all right. Niles was handcuffed to him. They're in B, right in this car. The DA's with him? He's in bedroom alone. This car, too. Mm, the boy sure worked that all right. <laughs> We're right between them. Oh. Johnny's got money, you know. Why shouldn't he get things worked right? Uh, he will. Getting me to pull this job for him was the smartest thing he ever did. Getting us, Ben. 
I come in on that fee. Don't forget. Well, don't you always come in on what I do, baby? Oh, sure. Like that washed-out blonde in the lobby last night. Huh. Oh, I was just a kid, Elsie. Forget it. Forget it? Sure. You leave me sitting in that lousy hotel room for two solid hours, and when I come down... Okay, they... okay. Forget it, will you? We got work to do. One of these days, so help me... Will I... you shut up? You've been harping about that dame all day. Well, why not? If I hadn't come down for that movie magazine when I did, you'd probably be with her yet. Just a kid. Will you pipe down? We got plans to make. Sure, sure. If you want the ticket stubs. Huh? The guy collected while you were out. No, no, keep them. I got plans to make, I said. Let's have it. Now, now look. The way I figure it, we... Well... You stop glaring at me. How can I work with you shooting off your face all the time? All right, go on. What's the plan? All right. Well, they're all three on this car, see? Harrington, Niles, and the DA himself. Yeah. The best thing is to get over with it fast, Elsie. That way we can get off at Toledo, be back in Chicago before they know what hit them. Back to the blonde, I suppose. (laughs) Will you listen, Elsie, and get this straight. I got a job to do now, a big job. For Johnny Galena, too, the biggest guy in the racket. I know that. So I don't fool around, get it? Now you shut up and listen to your orders, baby. Because this is one show I'm going to run right. Excuse me, may I get through, please? Yes, certainly. Oh, here, I'll open the door for you. Well, is everything all right, Chief? Yeah, so far, so good, Miss Miller. The conductor's collected all the tickets in our car, and he reports everything seems in order. Harrington's in the drawing room? With Niles, yes. Uh-huh. I'm going to relieve him while he gets some dinner. But in the meantime, I think you might circulate a little, see if anyone strikes you as out of the ordinary. I will, Chief. I was just going into the ladies' dressing room when I saw you in the aisle. Yes, I see. We might try the club car later on, too. You know what to do. Right. I'll wait here a moment until you're out of sight. If you need me, I'll be in the drawing room with Harrington. All right, Chief. If I can't get back to you without being seen, I'll send a note by the porter. All right, that's fine. And be careful, Miss Miller. Be just as careful as you can. Oh, pardon me. Are you using this dressing table? Oh, uh, go right ahead. Thank you. I was just going to see if I can do anything with my makeup. Honestly, the way your face can get dirty. (laughs) Isn't it something... You going all the way through, are you? That's right, dearie. Say, uh, you don't happen to have an extra cleansing tissue, do you? Why, yes. Yes, I do. It's right here in my bag. Oh, thanks. There you are. Thanks a lot. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. The uh, train swerved, and I must have knocked your purse on the floor. Well, don't worry. I'll get it. Here, let me. I'll get it, I said. Let my purse alone. But I was only... Never mind. You can have the makeup table if you want it. I'm finished. I'm sorry about your purse. Surely you don't think Keep I would... Keep it. So long, dearie. Uh, uh, thanks for the tissue. Yes, you're quite welcome. Oh, Porter. Oh. Down here, please, and hurry. Here's a seat, young lady, right here. Oh, thanks. You sure it ain't taken? Not if you want it, it ain't. Best seat in the club car, too. Gives you a view of where you've just been. It's exciting, ain't it? That's Indiana. Nothing exciting about that. Oh, I don't know. Ever been in Gary? We just passed through it, later, though. Hey, uh, can I buy you a drink? After a while, maybe. Ooh, I got such a head from last night. I don't think I can look at one. Uh, Gary, huh? You in business in Gary? I'm in business wherever I hang my hat, mister. Yeah? What kind of business? Why don't you guess? Well, let me see. Could be a model, you know. Get the looks for it. Thanks. But you're not. I guess you'd call me a booster. Huh? Always sticking up for the hometown. That's one definition, ain't it? There are others, you know. Like shoplifting. Yeah, so I've heard. 
Want to trade handles, kid? Mine's Ben. Ben Mott. Hi. Smith. Edith Smith. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Girl's got to be careful, Ben. She can't go around spilling her name, can she? She can if she's out from the wall. Maybe she ain't. Ever been nailed, lady? By the cops? Yeah. In Denver. Yeah? Where in Denver? In the shed. Railroad station to you. I know the lingo. What was the rat? Boosting? I was doing the hook for the troop. It was a go-back deal, and I end up with the bad man. Ah, you know the lingo yourself. Uh, St. Paul, you said? <laughs> what are you doing, kidding me, Ben? Nobody but a lamster gives St. Paul a play. This was Denver. The fix was in, so here I am. You know, Edie... Yeah? You're okay. Really okay. Oh, sure. I'm in great shape, I am. What's the matter, you broke? I said the fix was in, didn't I? What do you think happened to my fall, though? You, uh, got any plans, Edie? Oh, the big city. I thought maybe if I spend my last buck on a train like this, I could line up a mark. Who for? Traveling with somebody? No. No, I'm alone. I just thought I'd get in a new troop faster if I arrived with a sucker all set. Yeah, you would at that. You're smart, Edie. You don't sound so dumb yourself, Ben. Hey, um, I'll take that drink now. Sure thing. I'll ring the... Now, wait a minute. We can go back to my compartment and have a real drink. <laughs> you got a view of Indiana back there? I got a plan, Edie. I think maybe you're just the kid would go for it, too. How's the score? Plenty. Matter of fact, this is a business trip. Big business. Oh? I got a partner already, but... Oh, uh, you know how it is. The way my business runs, I need new blood. You know, Ben? Yeah? I got plenty of blood. Let's go back to your trap and, uh, have that drink. Hey, I won't be long, Chief. It's early. The diner shouldn't be crowded. It's all right. Take your time, Harrington. I'll stay here with Miles until you get back. What about me? When do I get to eat? I don't think it would be wise to take you into the diner, Niles. We'll have something brought back here later on. Yeah, I'll take care of it, Chief. Right. Say, uh, is Miss Miller in her bedroom? Uh, she is checking the train. Oh, and it'll be safer all around. Chief. All right, take your time. Safer all around. And you do think somebody might... Now, might... take it easy, Niles. Take it easy. Nothing's going to happen to you. I'm scared, I tell you. I was a fool to tell the warden I'd do now, it. Now, relax, I said. There's nothing to worry about. Sure, that's easy for you to say. I'm the guy they want to shut up. They won't. I've told you the trial in which you're going to testify means just about everything to me. So help me, I'm going to see that you do. Send her in to get some food. She? Oh, I see. <laughs> Do you? What's the matter, Ben? She cramp your style? You wouldn't. Would you, Edie? What do you think? What's the job, Ben? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, not so fast, lady. Let's see who you know first. Well, uh, let's see. Did you ever hear of uh, Swede Larson out of Cincinnati? Point out, man, yeah. Kugler? Runs a cannon mob in shape. Well? How about a big boy, Edie? Say, like Johnny Galena. He's standing a rap, ain't he? Won't be a rap if Tom Miles doesn't identify him at the trial, you know. Yeah, that's what I heard. What would you say if I told you Niles is on this train? And that's the job, Tom Niles? Maybe. <laughs> you must be big yourself, Ben. Doing a job for Johnny Galena. I'm big enough to take care of you, Edie. The two of us. For a long, long time. Ben, I... Why, you louse. Elsie, I thought you were in the diner. Yeah, I bet you did. 
Well, that ties it. It's her. Look, Why, Elsie, you I... poor fool. That's the dame I was telling you about. Huh? She's the one gave my purse the once-over in the ladies' room. What? Why, that's true, but I... I told you you'd make a false move, Ben. Now you've blown it for good. Sit down, Elsie. Let's straighten this up. Yeah? You think I'm nuts? She's probably got the train swarming with cops. I'm getting out of here. Sit down, I said. And stay for the rap? What kind of a fool do you think I am? Now, wait a minute. There's been a mistake. I'll say there's been a mistake, dearie. Him. I should have pulled out long ago. I warned you, Elsie. Sit down. You let go of me, you shoot diamond bum. I'm going to see to it that you get yours once and for all. Elsie, put that gun down. I knew she had a gun in that bag. That's right, dearie. Now, here's where you get off the joyride, Ben, and right into the arms of the law. Look, honey, calm down a minute. A minute, my back is turned. You know that ain't true, Elsie. I've always come back to you, haven't I? Yeah, you've always come back. But that's not good enough. Look, Elsie, this dame don't mean a thing to me, and she's not hooked up with a cop. She's a booster out of Denver. That's right, Elsie. I'm not after your guy. You keep out of this. Elsie, look at me, baby. I love you, honey. You know that, don't you? Don't you? Oh, Ben, if I could only believe you. You know me, baby. Why, I'm all for you. Always have been. Oh, come on. Come on. Let me have that heat. Oh, Ben, if you'd only play square with me. I get all riled up like this, and I don't know what I'm doing. That's my girl. Now, let me have the gun, Elsie. Here. Here, take it. That's right, Elsie. <clears throat> Thanks. You see, Ben, I... <laughs> Oh, don't. Don't. I haven't even started on her. Pull a gun on me, will you? Ben, no. So you're going to let me have it, won't you, Elsie? Huh? And with a rod, too. Nice and noisy, so the whole train could hear. I didn't mean it, Ben. It was just my temper. Yeah, well, I do mean it, kid. I'm through with that loud mouth of yours once and for all. Ben, no. Look out, Elsie. He's got a you knife. You keep out of this. Come on, Elsie. Here's where we say goodbye. Ben! Uh, oh. Oh. oh! You... You killed her. Yeah. You... It's like we said, Edie. You blood for old. Now, come on. Let you and me straighten this out. Yes, but... You've got questions to answer, little girl. And while you're talking, just keep your eyes on this knife. see what your district attorney makes of this in just a moment. But first, a definition of an optimist. An optimist is a man who takes the worst of it and makes the best of it. Now, a man is certainly getting the worst of it when he wakes up in the morning feeling sick and headachy due to the need of a laxative. But if he's an optimist, he makes the best of it. Yes, chances are he reaches for his sal hepatica. For you see, a sparkling glass of sal hepatica when you get up brings quick, gentle relief, usually within an hour. That means you don't have to risk feeling miserable all day waiting until night to take a laxative. And that's not all. In addition to quick, gentle relief, sal hepatica brings you another important advantage. This famous saline helps sweeten an upset stomach by helping to reduce excess gastric acidity. So, friends, be sure that you, too, keep a bottle of sal hepatica handy. Remembering this caution, use only as directed. Noon or night, see how much faster you feel better... Thanks to gentle, speedy Sal Hepatica. Now back to Mr. District Attorney. I'll take another look through the train, Mr. District Attorney, if you think that'll help. Well, yes, I wish you would, Mr. Billings. I can't understand where she is. I told you something would happen. I knew it. Pipe down, Niles. Hey, Chief, you sure Miss Miller ain't in her bedroom? I'm positive. Suppose I have that look at the other cars. Will you be here? Well, no, I think I'll go back to my bedroom, Mr. Billings. You'll find me there. She'll turn up, I'm sure. One thing, she can't get off the train. Yeah, Chief, I don't like this at all. You ain't seen her since she started back for the club car? Before dinner. Did you hear the conductor? He said she couldn't get off the train. Well, she couldn't. It must be doing 70 through here. She could get pushed off, couldn't Uh, she? That'll be enough of that, Niles. I'm scared, I tell you. You promised to take care of me. Shut up, Niles. Shut up. You're all right. I'll go back to my bedroom, Harrington. I don't like to stay in here with you too long. Yeah, right, Chief. We'll see what the conductor's search reveals. And if he doesn't find Miss Miller... Yeah? Then we will, Harrington. I promise you, we will. Yeah. 
Yes, yes, come in. Oh, come in, Mr. Bennett. She's not in sight, Mr. District Attorney. I cover the whole train. I see. But this turned up. Yes? It seems a young lady gave the porter a note for you before dinner. Miss Miller? I think so, sir. Yes? Here, it's written on the back of a ticket stub. Well, let me see it. The porter had been warned about this car, you see. I told him myself to be careful. Gee. You say she gave him this note before dinner? He held it, sir. He was afraid to deliver anything without checking well, with me. I've got to get out of here, Conductor. Which way is compartment G? To your left, four down. Wait for me. I may need your help. Oh, excuse me, will you please? May I get through? Take it easy, bud. Just let me get out of your way. I'm sorry, but I'm in a hurry. You sure are. Thank you. Excuse me, please. I've got to get through. <laughs> Tell you, you can't stop people like Johnny Galena. He'll do anything. Oh, look, Niles, you've been whining ever since we left Chicago. Will you shut up? Take off my handcuffs, Harrington. Chain to you this way, I haven't got a chance. Look, for the last time, my job is to protect you, do you understand? These cuffs stay, kid. You and me, real cozy like. I'm scared. Yeah, you said that. If I were you, I'd... Hey, 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 hey look, hey, we're... Hey, it's a wreck. Hang on, Niles. Hang on. Let go. Let go. What you heard it? Turn it over! Look out! 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 Look can't move, I tell you, Harrington. Shut up, shut up. There's no need to get in a panic. Get me out of here. Get me out. Uh, oh, I can't move either, I tell you. If you ain't hurt, just shut up. Hey, listen. Hey. hey. They're coming in for us already. Do you hear them? They must be using the axe. Yeah, we're all right. Just, just get this beam off us. Go in there, Niles. I'm pinned. I can't move. <coughs> Just keep coming. I can see the light where you broke the side. <coughs> keep coming. You, Harrigan? Where? Yeah. Keep coming. Through the side, see? Through the side of the car. Don't worry. I'll get there. <coughs> Just take it easy. Yeah. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. Who are you? You'll find out, Harrington. So you're pinned, are you, Niles? Harrington. Uh, don't get panicky, Niles. Wait till I reach for my gun. Just stay where you are, Niles. I'll take care of you. Harrington, it, it's Ben Mott. He's going to kill me. I remember him from Chicago. I can't, can't reach my gun. I want this beam if I could only push this beam up. Harrington, you said you'd protect me. Uh, there you are. Just a minute now and I'll be there. I mean, to look, he's got a knife. <coughs> hey, drop, drop that knife. Drop it, do you hear me? Uh, sure, I've got it covered. Uh, right in your little pal here. No, my dog. So you thought you'd turn rat on Johnny Galena. I, I, I warn you, I'll, I'll do nothing, copper. Uh, I just lie you, there till I finish with him. No, uh, no, Ben, please, please, one Ben. One more push, Niles, and I got you, uh, that dirty rat. Harrington, help me, help me! I can't! Wheel on Johnny, would you? Here's where you... No! Oh. Harrington! Oh, Chief. You all right in there? <laughs> I can't see over this body. Yeah, you got him, Chief. It's okay now. Just lie quietly, Harrington. We'll be through to you in a minute. Right. Hey, Niles. 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 Niles, are you all right? I, I'm all right. He's dead. All right, men. Let's cut away this beam. Oh, Chief. Chief, that was close. Can you get some water, Miss Miller? Right. There's a doctor out on the tracks. Well, I'm okay, Chief. Was There's anybody... no one dead or hurt, Chief. This is the only car that went over. The train hit an empty truck on the road. Oh, good. Miss Miller, where did she... Well, it's quite a story, Harrington. But first, let's get you and Niles outside. We've got a trip to finish, you know. All right, men, let's go. Your district attorney will return in just a moment to explain his rescue of Harrington and Niles. 
But first, here's a young lady who seems to be very happy indeed. Hallelujah, my guy's come back. Well, glad to hear he's back, young lady. And you know, in lots of other ways, too, life is getting settled again. For instance, Vitalis is back. Yes, back on drug counters everywhere. Vitalis? What's Vitalis? Vitalis is for keeping dry, unruly hair under control. It is? Well, then I guess that guy of mine must be using Vitalis. His hair is always well-groomed. Well-groomed in a natural masculine way? Mm Mm-hmm, that's right. Well-groomed, yet free from that patent leather shine? (laughs) Yes, sir. That's Vitalis, all right. What's more, Vitalis and the 60-second workout stimulates circulation, prevents scalp dryness, routes embarrassing loose dandruff, helps retard excessive falling hair. And that's why we say to men, to look your best tomorrow, get a bottle of Vitalis tonight. Here is your district attorney. Well, I want to say first, ladies and gentlemen, that Tom Niles went on the stand in my prosecution of Johnny Galena, and because of his testimony, we were able to secure another very important conviction in our war against crime. Yeah, I still say that was close, Chief. If you hadn't been right behind Ben in that wreckage, he'd have killed Niles, sure. Chief, I think you'd better explain just how you knew Ben was making his way through the wreck to Harrington and Niles. But it was your note that did it, Miss Miller, the note the porter delayed delivering until just before the wreck. When you were in the ladies' dressing room with Elsie, that started the whole thing. When her purse fell, Harrington, I noticed it was heavy. Too heavy for an ordinary lady's handbag. Oh, she was carrying a gun, huh? I'll say she was. Fortunately, when I picked up the bag, her compartment receipt fell out. I wrote the note to the chief on the back of it. Yes, and as soon as I got the note, I went immediately to that compartment. As Miss Miller had written, the occupant seemed suspicious. (laughs) That's a mild word for Ben, Chief. (laughs) After he tied me up, I thought I was done for. Yeah, so you found Miss Miller in Ben's compartment, huh, Chief? Yes, Harrington, and Elsie's body. Miss Miller told me Ben had started for you, and so I followed him. Fortunately, neither of us was hurt in the wreck, and Ben managed to get out of the car first, but I wasn't far behind him. Boy, am I glad you stayed on his tail. Oh, hey, Chief, what about next week? Well, next week, ladies and gentlemen, our story concerns one of the most unusual and interesting criminals in our files. It's the case of the dangerous clown. And I invite you to join us for it. And until then, thank you and good night. The names of all characters in tonight's dramatization are fictitious, and any resemblance to names of living persons or actual places is purely coincidental. Our stars were Jay Justin in the title role. Len Doyle as Harrington, and Vicki Vola as Miss Miller. The music was under the direction of Peter Van Steeden, and the authors were Edward Byron and Robert Shaw. And remember, Vitalis for hair that's well-groomed, Sal Hepatica for the smile of health. Vitalis and Sal Hepatica, two famous Bristol Myers products, which each week bring you Mr. District Attorney. so often the girls say... What a man. If only he had that clean-shaven, masculine look. But many men say their faces are too tender for close, clean shaving. And girls say, no alibis, please. And I say, no alibis necessary. Not when you rely on Ingram shaving cream. That rich Ingram lather helps condition your face for the razor. You get cool, soothing shaves in comfort. Remember, men, comfort means coolness. Coolness means Ingram. I-N-G-R-A-M. Ingram, the cooler shaving cream. Try Ingram yourself. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.